Hey, what's up everybody, Tom here. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna be diving into Resolve, how to essentially navigate once you've downloaded this folder, how to bring things into Resolve. To kind of start out, essentially once you've downloaded the .zip zip file, you're gonna unpack it and you're gonna be given this folder. And in this folder, viewing it on a Mac, the file hierarchy breaks it down into Premiere and Resolve. So since this tutorial is kind of dedicated to Resolve, I'll show you what's, you know, how to navigate through this. Essentially, you have the different folders from Alchemy, Coolsoft, Glimmer, Perl. You know, these are all the filters, right? And when you dive into, let's just, for example, use Glimmer, right? <clears throat> You're going to have two things within each folder. You're going to have examples, which is basically a control, no filter, which shows you what it looks like. And as you arrow through it, you can see the glimmers being applied. You can see glimmer full, arrow down, glimmer half, and no filter. So these are a quick way to sort of dial in or maybe look at what, you know, softening you're liking before bringing it in. Um, but ultimately, yeah, each of these uh, folders has an example, right? Um, but why the other uh, thing inside of each folder is the DRXs. Um, and this is the file format for Resolve. And I'm gonna show you now how to bring that in. Uh, something worth noting is there's different strengths, right? Half, full, if we even go over to like super miss, we've got a ton over here, full half quarter. So yeah, essentially just a bunch of different options. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna dive into Resolve. So we've got Resolve booted up. Um, I assume at this point you've kind of are at the coloring section. Um, if not at the very bottom, there's this little color icon. Um, but essentially, yeah, I've kind of skipped over the steps in which you would bring in the footage because I, I assume you're kind of already at that point. But I've brought in this shot. I've, you know, I'm over in the color tab now. And the only thing I've done is I've added a look or uh, a grade, if you will. Uh, this isn't necessary, but I do think when you're applying a, you know, softening, it is helpful to sort of get a, a good sense of like where the contrast and saturation are. So not necessary, but the first node I will do is I add a look. And for those who are curious, I've essentially just added our cinematic looks, um, you know, and essentially that's it. By hitting option S on a Mac, I'm adding another node. So I, you in theory could do everything off of one node. Just I think the beauty, the beautiful thing about Resolve is the fact that it is node based. So with the second node selected, um, this is kind of how you want to set yourself up before applying the softening. So there's two ways to bring it in. You have over here stills and power grade. If you bring them into power grade, that's going to follow you from project to project. So you can essentially, if you move on from another project a week from now, by dragging them into power grade, you are essentially going to have them on no matter what project you're using, right? If you drag them into stills, well, that's only gonna apply to this project. So if I exit, quit, move on next week, they're not gonna be there. So you'd have to bring them in each time. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I am gonna just be bringing them into stills, but just keep in mind, Power Grade is a great function if you wanna leave these softenings in, uh, these digital softening filters in for future reference. So with the stills tab selected, I'm gonna just uh, hide resolve, and I'm gonna be bringing in, for example, these DRXs, right? Um, so for this example, let's just do ProMist. That's a pretty common filter, DRXs, and we have full, half, and quarter. So all I gotta do is essentially bring open, sorry, just try to navigate these multiple screens. I'm gonna be bringing in these three files, and I'm just gonna drag them in from the finder into stills. And ignore this little picture. When this uh, look was created, uh, essentially we were using source footage that's obviously not present, but the thumbnail does just sort of show this guy in this room that is not important. So if that's confusing you in any circumstance, basically this is just a thumbnail from when it was created. So we were using footage of this guy that you can kind of see in all three of these. Ignore that, um, that's just a Resolve thing. So if you even, what's really cool about Resolve is when you hover your mouse over it, it'll show you what it looks like. It's gonna show you what it looks like as if that's the only thing applied. So keep in mind, obviously I have a, a look applied, but with the look turned off, it's cool because you can essentially just audition. You know, you can kind of even see the windows it is obviously the highlights, which is where these softening filters, these digital softening filters are gonna target these highlights. But yeah, essentially how you would do it, I'm gonna just grab half for instance, drag that over to my second node. So let me just make sure I have my second node selected and I'm gonna drag this half on 
And yeah, you can see by just hitting this number is a great way to toggle it. You can see, look, it's just applying to these highlights. So just to confirm, this is what the footage looks like when I brought it in. I added a quick grade just to, you know, kind of add some contrast and saturation. And this compound node, this second node that I made by hitting um, option S on a Mac, I'm sure it's very similar and probably control S on a PC or Windows. But yeah, then I essentially dragged over the one I wanted and I turned on the look and you can kind of see right here what it's doing. Um, something I think is really kind of important um, to keep in mind is actually I think this should have been, let's see. So if you wanted to dial in this look further, uh, what's really nice is under these tabs, right? You have kind of quite a few tabs right here. This tab right here is, I don't know what this icon, how you describe it, but under key output, by dialing this up or down, you are essentially adding or subtracting this. So if I wanted to bring this to 0.25, watch what happens when I hit return. It minimizes the effect. So now the effect is at 25%. And look, as I start to slide this up, say I even wanna go up into the 90s, check that out. So if I hit Command Z, you can kind of see back and forth, ready? So there's 0.25, there's one. So you can see just by playing around with this key output, you can essentially dial in how much this compound node or this digital softening filter is uh, being applied. Obviously, one thing I wanna uh, mention as well is if you are a colorist who tends to, which I would imagine, have several nodes, I would save the softening or this compound node for last. So say, you know, you had, um, quite a few different nodes. Maybe this one's doing skin tones. Maybe, you know, that's kind of a common thing, right? I would save this for last. I just find that ends up working the best. Um, just given that this is node based is save the softening for your last node. Um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps it up to recap. You obviously just drag and drop the DRXs into stills or power grade if you want to keep it for future projects. And then you essentially just drag this onto a node and you can dial in its key output down here below. I uh, hope this was helpful and uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up.